Well, I'm going to start the um, open event um, by saying hello and welcome you very warmly to this presentation, which is um, going to be looking at the Courtauld Graduate Diploma in the History of Art and giving you an overview of the course and of the applications process for the course. My name is Theresa Lane and I am the um, head of the course. And I'm also an alumna of the course. I, I was um, um, participating in this course nine years ago, so I can speak from the experience of having attended the course um, and also have the great pleasure now of, of leading the course. The plan for the open day, um, virtual open day, is, is um, fairly straightforward. I'm going to start by giving you an introduction, brief introduction to, to the Courtauld and why you might be interested in coming to study here. And then I'm going to do a sort of deep dive into the content of the diploma itself and give you an overview of the way that the course will be structured um, should you join and talk you through some of the modules, uh, trying to give you a flavour of what you can expect as a graduate diploma student here at the Courtauld. And I will be talking about uh, issues like um, the courses you might be doing, the timetable, attendance, and, and those sorts of things. And I'll talk to you also about some of the resources and some of the things that make the Courtauld such a distinctive place to study. After I've spoken for about 30 minutes or so, I'm going to be joined by my colleague Taka from the admissions department, and he will be able to address the specific questions about admission and that process. So let's get started. Oh, that's rather frustrating. My screen seems to be frozen and I'm not able to um, move forward. I'm just going to pause the sharing and um, see if I can start with a new um, sharing. Just bear with me, please. Here we are. So the Courtauld itself, where I'm speaking to you from today, was founded in 1932 by Samuel Courtauld. And we currently number just over 600 students, which range from undergraduate, so BA students, through to the postgraduate cohort. We're split between two sites, Vernon Square, where I'm speaking to you from today, which is very close to King's Cross in a central London, and also we have our Somerset House campus, which may be known to you, um, those of you that are familiar with the gallery. We have a faculty of around 36, and we have, I think, unrivaled breadth of teaching in uh, terms of the specialities of the faculty and this increasingly global view to art history. One of the things that makes studying at the Courtauld so interesting and engaging, I would suggest, is the fact that it's led by staff, faculty who are researching on an ongoing basis. So therefore the, the courses that are offered and that are developed are in tune with their research and are often at cutting edge. And um, it's very exciting as a student to be part of that research journey. One of the other things about the graduate diploma student looking forward, um, where you should join next year, is that there's going to be increased um, input from our colleagues in the conservation department. Um, you may have come across the conservation department um, on TV programmes. Um, it's quite high profile and does some wonderful work. And colleagues from that team will actually be um, playing a role in teaching the graduate diploma cohort in the next academic year. And the other um, interesting aspect about joining the Courtauld at this point is our strategic link up with King's College London, which I'll address uh, in a few moments. So why would you want to come to the Courtauld and study and, and embark on um, a programme like the Graduate Diploma? Well, this ability, I think, that we have to offer this study which transcends boundaries in terms of media, time and geography. And that is very much led and influenced, as I've just explained, by faculty who are researching and therefore sharing and teaching on their research. You also have the advantage of being in London, so at the heart of the art world, and that therefore means that we are able, um, through teaching and through um, visits, to take advantage of the shows and exhibitions and visits that, that London can offer. And many of the courses that we offer here at the Courtauld are regularly um, taking students out and about to, to galleries, um, private galleries, as well as um, museums, public galleries, and, and giving uh, people a really good experience of what's available in London. We also, of course, have our own gallery at Somerset House. 
In addition to the um, these sorts of aspects, we have um, support for you as um, students coming here. We have a brilliant careers department. And um, I'll, again, I'll, I'll return to that a bit later in the presentation. So in a nutshell, what is the Courtauld Graduate Diploma in the History of Art? Well, it's nine months and basically a sort of uh, concentrated form of the three year undergraduate degree. For those of you that might be familiar with um, a law conversion degree, which basically um, conflates a three year law degree into one year, the graduate diploma operates in a similar way in the field of art history. And what it offers is graduates from other disciplines to come here and have a sort of fast track immersive year or nine months um, transferring existing skills into the world of history of art. Who's it suitable for? Well, it's suitable for those that are returning to higher education. Um, these can be people who have been away from higher education for some years or can be those that have graduated more recently. Uh, and it can also appeal to people who are wanting to gain a broad overview of art history. The other point I wanted to really highlight to you, and, and again, I can speak from personal experience about this, is this um, wonderful cohort that you join. Typically the cohort is between 25 and 30 students. And one of the things that makes it such an interesting and uh, enjoyable year is are your fellow students. Um, you spend a lot of time together in, in classes and discussion groups, but also there's the social side. And the range of backgrounds, ages and nationalities is truly diverse. And the friendships that you make over the course of the year are long lasting. And I'm still in touch, for example, with um, several of the people that I met when I did the diploma course. I think it's one of the things that is really wonderful about it. And I know I was talking um, just earlier this morning to a couple of the current cohort and they were making this point and saying how helpful they found it being able to sort of share experiences and discuss with, with their fellow students. So I think it's helpful also to tell you a little bit now about what the course actually entails. And I'm going to just give you a, a brief overview in the next two slides, and then I'm going to sort of um, take you in a bit more detail to sort of subject matter and content. But the way I wanted to present it to you is the fact that the course effectively divides into um, two, two sort of, I, I was gonna say two halves, it's not really fair to say they're halves, but two aspects, let's say. The first is those that are taught. And these are taught over our two semesters, autumn and spring, both, both 12 weeks in duration. And the foundations course runs across both of those semesters. So you take that course over both of those, um, both of those terms. And this is assessed, um, it, well, it's assessed by essay and it's also taught by means of lectures and a further discussion class. The lectures are um, a chance for the faculty to present to you um, and in a sort of traditional lecture format. What's great about this course, though, is the discussion class, which one runs on a weekly basis and graduate diploma students are put together. So your discussion class is just is just graduate diploma, co your cohort. And it gives you a chance with um, a member of staff to sort of drill down to some of the issues that have been covered in the in the foundation's lectures and, and to talk about them in a bit more detail. So in addition to foundations, in the um, first semester, you'll undertake a program known as physical histories. And in then the second semester, a program known as critical museology. And then in addition to these um, physical histories and, and museology programs, you then have some elective options which you can look at. So that's the taught element. This is balanced by the opportunity for you then to do some independent research. And this is comes um, at the sort of, if you like, the sort of second half of your time at the Courtauld on the diploma. You start thinking about topics for your assessed essay well, at any time you like, but you have to sort of make a decision in the um, January, February, and then you work on this um, 5,000 word assessed essay, which is submitted in May. And what's so, I think, wonderful about this is that it allows you to undertake a, a really you know, substantial piece of research, uh, allowing you to engage with a, a topic or a subject which you may arrive at the Courtauld with a strong idea about what you'd like to research or 
what more often happens uh, is that you get caught up with one of the courses that you're being taught and you find you want to specialize and research one of the aspects from that course. So um, there's, there's uh, time for you to think about the, the, the subject you might choose. And then once you've chosen and you've got a sort of draft essay title, you then have a supervisor who's appointed and, and you have a, a couple of meetings with that supervisor to help you through that process of research. And this is a chance for students to make a contribution to scholarship. And um, we've had some really fascinating pieces of research over the over the last few years. So let's just look at this taught element first um, and, and um, go back to what I was mentioning about this foundations uh, module, which runs over both the autumn and spring semesters. And I thought it might be helpful if you had a flavour of what's being taught right now for the graduate diploma cohort that are current here now. And they've so far had um, a module on classical and Byzantine art. Um, they're now just finishing, I think today maybe had their last lecture on the Renaissance module. And next week they start um, their final module for the semester on the Buddhist arts of Asia. In the semester after Christmas, they're going to be modules on um, early modern Europe and surrealism. So the foundations course, um, I, I don't wouldn't describe it as a survey, but it's it gives you sort of, um, I mean, in the first semester, certainly a broadly chronological introduction to certain periods or styles of art. And it is um, a great way of giving you some sort of points of reference um, that ca you carry through through over the, the two semesters. And as I said, this is taught through a combination of lectures by a member of the faculty twice a week, so two lectures. And then that's uh, also um, supported by these discussion groups, which allow you the chance within a smaller group of people to discuss issues that have come from those lectures. What runs alongside foundations in this taught component of the course in, in the first semester is this um, new course, which we've been evolving um, and which the, the, will be running from the academic year starting um, next September is physical histories. And this is the course which I mentioned, which is taught with our colleagues from the conservation department. And this is a really wonderful chance to engage with works of art by looking closely at their material characteristics. So looking at the materiality of things, whether it's painting or sculpture. And this will be led, as I've said, by, by colleagues who, who, do, who, who are doing this day to day. So that will run in the first semester. And then in the second semester, another new course, which is going to be looking at um, the role of well, museums, essentially display and galleries and um, termed critical museology. And again, making use of the fact that we're in London and we have access to this unrivaled uh, array of galleries and exhibition spaces. And uh, it will be a course which will take you out and about and having discussions within these gallery spaces and discussing issues like, you know, what choices did the curators make and, and why? And I think what's really interesting about this course is that it's going to be looking obviously at what's happening now in terms of um, exhibitions and galleries you may be able to visit through the course now, but also looking at the past and, and looking at how things have changed, how museology has evolved. On top of the um, options I've just described, the final taught element to the diploma are these um, modules um, which take the form of, um, well, they're described as histories or approaches. Um, they, as you'll see from some of the titles which are on the screen, they can be artist specific. So the first course looking at Van Eyck, or they can be more thematic um, uh, or, and they can be looked quite theoretical as well. For example, questions on feminism. I'm teaching at the moment on the final um, course on the list from London to Namibia, art, travel and imagination in the middle ages. And that's a wonderful sort of deep dive into um, medieval visual culture through the eyes of travel and imagination. And uh, it's been um, a really engaging journey, literally. And, and we've looked at um, various issues of maps, of, 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 of built spaces um, and, and looking at things very creatively. So these courses um, change year on year, 
because they're led by members of faculty and allied to teaching, uh, allied to research, I beg your pardon, that they're working on, this means that they are sort of dynamic and live and, and a great way of, of, of being involved with a, with a member of the faculty who's, who's actively researching this topic. So this is a, a sort of snapshot, if you like, of how your um, semesters and, and how the teaching and um, independent work would break down between the courses I've just described to you and then balanced with the dissertation, the independent. So you've got this combination of taught through foundations, histories, approaches, physical histories and critical museology, and then your independent research project, which is the dissertation. You'll see from the um, sidebar teaching, these courses vary in, in the, the method of delivery and usually are a combined form of either lectures and seminars or discussion classes. And, and, and they vary depending on the, on the content and who, who's leading them. The other thing which I think is really useful for the graduate diploma cohort is a series of um, skills based classes which this semester are running on Monday mornings and these are sort of loosely termed academic skills or academic literacies and as you'll see from the elements that I've got on the slide these are a way of familiarizing yourself with the academic apparatus the scholarly apparatus that will underpin your research and your writing um, and your presentations uh, at the Courtauld and in the diploma. Now, for those people who are coming from um, higher education recently, so they've graduated in the last year or two, um, depending on their degree course, this may or may not be as necessary. But for those people who've been out of higher education for um, more than a couple of years, this will act as a really useful refresher. And this is led by our academic skills tutor and gives you a chance within a, uh, your group, you, you know, you're with your um, fellow graduate diploma students of understanding some of these um, practices, um, how to footnote, for example, how to, how to, how to create and how to accurately um, show a, a bibliography. So there, it's, it, it is detailed, but it's also the broader picture. And the first week, visual analysis it, you know, is, is something you'll be spending a lot of time doing over the course of your, your studies at the Courtauld and is designed to sort of help you with some suggestions for technique and how to approach it. So this has been a course which is running throughout this first semester and, and is a nice balance to the content in the other courses that you'll be doing. One of the things I'm often asked about by prospective students is, is workload, workload and what they can expect. And the thing I would um, point out is that the diploma is a full time course. You could expect to be um, to need to be on site here at Vernon Square most days of the week. So each day of the week, you're likely to have a timetabled lecture or discussion group, or maybe two of those. And in addition to the taught time, you are also um, going to be um, given a reading list, and that will comprise material that you're required to read for both the lectures and the discussion classes, as well as additional material if you're really interested in the topic. And we, as a rough guide, expect you to supplement each hour of taught time so each hour of contact time with about four hours of personal study in terms of what you can expect for deadlines um, the current cohort um, that are here now are working on the basis of submitting their first um, formally assessed piece of work which is a foundations essay and that is um, an essay of two and a half thousand words and that's submitted in a couple of weeks time. And they have had the choice of um, uh, a question either from the first um, module, which was the um, classical module, the Renaissance or Buddhist art. So you can choose one essay from either any of those modules and, and that is your um, assessment. And the same follows in the next semester. The assessed essay, as I've talked about, is, is um, your independent research project. And then additionally, some of the courses um, are currently um, examined by means of a, a three hour exam. Um, in addition to these deadlines, um, there is other work um, described as formative, um, which means it doesn't contribute to your overall um, result, but is nonetheless part of your um, 
attending these courses, and that is typically a presentation. So in the uh, course I'm teaching at the moment on art and travel in the Middle Ages, for example, each of the graduate diploma students has been assigned a topic. And um, over the course of the semester, week by week, they are asked to present for about 10 minutes on a topic which I've assigned to them. Sometimes that presentation will happen outside in the gallery or in a church or a cathedral which we're visiting. Other times it will be in a seminar room, in which case they will present via a PowerPoint. So they will do that. And additionally, work is set. Um, it may be a vision analysis exercise. It may be a shorter essay, but there will be written work um, happening as part of these courses as well. I thought it might be helpful to give you a sort of literally a snapshot. This is this is um, the way that the semester breaks down for the current cohort. And I think what you can see straight away, I hope, is the fact that each day of the week something is going on. Now, um, that starts on a Monday with your with your uh, current cohort having their academic literacies programme. And then you'll see it sort of colour coded. The foundations modules are in yellow and they are currently taught on a Tuesday and a Wednesday morning, the, the lectures. And then you'll see in green um, other classes. And these are the other modules which the diploma cohort are taking. Um, you'll see that they are different topics. At this term, we have running Mapping Contemporary Asian Art, the Modern Interior and Art, Travel and Imagination. You are assigned, you current cohort are assigned to one of those modules. So you don't take all three, you, you're assigned to one and you, you are asked to express a preference for that. Um, if you have time and if your timetable allows, you are then also permitted to audit. So in other words, you can sit in on the other modules that are running and if, if you're interested in, in sort of getting a fuller experience. You'll see there are um, other lectures on the slide, Frameworks, which is another a module which is offered to our second year undergraduates, which um, the current graduate diploma cohort are also invited to audit and attend. And what this timetable doesn't show is the additional discussion classes, one for foundations um, each week. Um, so this gives you, I think, at least a flavour of the kind of commitment. And, and as I said, the fact that you'll need to be on site um, most days of the week. In terms of um, what you might want to get out of the diploma course, that will depend very much on your motives for, for applying and for coming here. Um, just thought it's helpful to highlight some of the paths that have been taken by students um, in, in uh, past cohorts. Uh, certainly for me, when I was here, I applied from the diploma for the MA programme. That was my intention in, in coming to the Courtauld. And it varies in any one year, but often um, as many as a third or a quarter of the cohort might apply for further um, postgraduate study at the Courtauld by applying for the MA programme. There's around well, between 25 and 30 MA program um, courses that are run each year at the Courtauld and, and the, the postgraduate diploma um, students are, of course, eligible to apply for those. Others may use the diploma as a stepping point to get into the art world. Um, others are taking a sabbatical or taking a break from work and, and are returning to existing employment. Um, others have other motives and, and personal satisfaction is one of those um, for a significant um, number of the cohort. So it, it really varies. In terms of resources, um, just to sort of um, highlight to you again this point about why you would study at the Courtauld. And I would say it's because of the sheer range of material and um, you know, the things you can see and do while you're studying here. I would highlight to you um, the joy of having the Courtauld Gallery um, reopen on site at Somerset House. This was closed for refurbishment and reopened um, about a year ago, in fact, and is a stunning um, rehang of, of um, the highlights of the collection. And um, I myself have done some, enjoyed doing some teaching in the Courtauld Gallery um, this term. The Courtauld Gallery, for those of you that are less familiar with it, um, it, as I say, is based on our other site in Somerset House, just on the Strand, and is fit and probably best known for its collection of um, Impressionist and post-Impressionist works. But in fact, um, the collection stretches from the early Renaissance to the 20th century. And there's also a rolling programme of temporary exhibitions. Uh, Fuseli has just opened, as well as other sort of smaller um, mini exhibitions, if you like. Um, and the Prince and Drawing Room is another wonderful resource with a huge array of um, a huge collection. 
Of course, we have phenomenal um, library, um, we have physical books, but we've also um, um, have access to libraries elsewhere. Um, we can, um, you can use uh, as a student of the University of London, the resources at Senate House, um, but also through our link up with King's College London, you're also able to access the many libraries that they have as well. Part of the um, reaction to the um, strictures of the COVID pandemic meant that we um, radically improved our virtual digital library resources. So we now have um, extensive resources on that. We have a virtual learning environment and or which is commonly abbreviated to VLE. And as a student, um, everyone has access to the VLE and your courses will be available to you on the VLE with your reading lists and links to the text that you've been requested to read. Um, so that makes your life a lot easier. Um, but the sheer range of um, material, um, both physical and virtual, is staggering. Some of you may be familiar with the um, wonderful range of material that is offered by our research forum, which is run um, from Vernon Square. And this is an extensive uh, and really varied array of lectures, conferences, workshops, seminars and talks. And these can be a combination of online events, but also increasingly now um, face to face. And in any one week, you could expect to find a couple of these happening. Um, some are all day events, others are in the sort of early evening. And they are a really, well, reflecting the interests of the faculty and, and obviously guest lecturers and guest speakers that come in, very diverse in terms of the content. So in any given week, there may be a work in progress event for them, from, you know, which, which speaks to um, themes from the medieval world presented, say, by a, by a visiting scholar who might be um, working on a, a project for a book. Um, that might be contrasted with someone speaking about 20th century um, or more sort of um, uh, a thematic. Um, so it's, it's very diverse. And if you're interested, most of the material is available on our website it's been, that's been recorded. So you would give you a flavour of the sort of things that you can attend. These are things which will make your experience at the Courtauld um, a sort of uh, fuller and, and more engaging. You will have to make sure you balance that, obviously, with your own life outside the Courtauld. Um, sometimes it's not always able to stay into the evening for people that have um, caring commitments. Um, but there is a range of, of these um, talks and material available for you to, to enjoy. In terms of the support you'll receive as a student, as a graduate diploma student, um, you have a personal tutor, and that's me for the current cohort as head of the programme. And you also have access to um, the Royal Literary Fund Fellows. These are people who are able to help you with your writing. So, for example, you have an essay that you want to um, have a second opinion on. You'd like to have some advice on helping perhaps you form your arguments. These are people who um, are able to help you with that. And you can have one on one. You can book one on one sessions um, with these people. We also have um, a very active um, student union and we also have um, well-being as well, which is supported by counsellors, study skills tutors, disability support. So there is a, a range of um, people and professionals here to, to make your studying journey um, enjoyable and so that you feel supported. The career service is wonderful and there is uh, an array of options depending on what you what you want um, or what you hope to achieve um, from the diploma program. These can um, be a mixture of one on one appointments um, practice interviews, if, if that's relevant, but also um, there's a part of a broader program which is run for the for the. Um, other students that are here, so for the undergraduates as well as the postgraduate students, so there are often events that are. Um, a certain employer may come to speak, for example, Christie's were um, doing an event last week. Um, so there are there are these sorts of events running on a quite a regular basis. But there's also specific events graduate that are actually directed more to the um, interests of the diploma cohort. And I'm going to be presenting tomorrow morning with my colleague from the careers department on uh, careers itself and then looking at specifically at why you might want to um, apply for an MA. So those sorts of things are, are geared towards the, the graduate diploma cohort. What do you need to, to have to join um, the, the graduate diploma programme? Well, we ask that you have um, a strong or good 2-1 degree in your in your undergraduate degree, in your bachelor's degree, uh, and obviously the equivalent if it's not, a, not from an English institution. 
We have English language requirements if English is not your first language. And the other thing which we ask that you submit as part of your application is an example of written work. Now, if you're coming from studying quite recently, um, you may want to submit an essay that you've done for your undergraduate course. If you've been out of studying for a while, this is not something to, to worry about. Um, what we suggest is that you might choose to go to an exhibition or you might choose to go to the Courtauld Gallery and choose a pair of objects or a pair of paintings and, and write um, your response to those, to either to the exhibition or to the paintings. What we're looking for here is, uh, I suppose, a, a, an example of how you write and how you approach looking at art. Um, that's one thing which unites all of the people that come to the uh, Courtauld Institute, of course, is that underlying interest in the history of art. And the written work sample is a chance for you to, to show that and um, can be adapted to, to, to where you are in your in your um, working and professional life. Um, but it, but it, it is accessible whether you have a recent essay or not. My colleague um, Taka will be talking to you um, and joining joining this event shortly, and he will speak um, more specifically about the process um, of admissions. But I thought it might just be helpful to run through the application process and what you what you need to to have when you apply here. So your um, written sample, which is what I've just been discussing, this this um, piece of writing is supplemented by a personal statement, uh, and then with the other uh, items which are mentioned on this slide a CV, um, transcript of your grades, references, and, and evidence of English language proficiency, if, if that's relevant. The final thing I wanted to say is, or to invite rather, is to stay in touch. If you have questions from today, which um, we're not able to answer, or you think of something after the event, um, you're very welcome to email me. I've got my um, email address on the screen, or uh, if it's a more um, a question around the process of actually applications, then my colleague Taka, hello Taka, who's just come on screen now, um, will be able to, to answer as well. So I'm going to stop now and um, allow Taka to um, give us um, his um, overview of the admissions process. Thank you very much, Teresa. <clears throat> Hi everyone. Um, so thank you very much for joining the virtual open day today. Uh, my name is Taka. Um, and I'm the postgraduate admissions officer here at the Courtauld. Um, I'm going to talk about admissions related topics. Um, uh, before I start, um, please use the chat function button um, at the bottom of the screen to ask any questions you may have, and we will answer them after this um, admissions talk. Um, so if you can actually sort of um, just do that using the chat function at the bottom of the screen. That'd be brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, kindly, Teresa actually covered a um, lot of um, admissions um, requirements. Um, so I'm just going to talk quite briefly about uh, the process. Um, so applications are now open. Um, you can start making an application by visiting our how to apply for postgraduate programs page on our website. Application deadline is 25th of April 2023. And um, we only start assessing applications after the deadline. And um, this is because um, um, just to allow people to apply for other courses as well. Um, so you may want to apply for MA History of Art and also graduate um, diploma in the History of Art as well. Um, and it, you can actually apply for two different programs at the Courtauld. Um, this is the reason why um, the graduate diplomas um, deadline slightly later than other programs we have. Um, so entry requirements, um, so students will normally have achieved a good 2-1 in their bachelor's degree and um, considered to be an average 65% or above. Um, for overseas applicants, our requirements are equivalent of GPA 3.5 or above. Um, we welcome all applications from various academic backgrounds and we always assess um, um, all submitted applications. Um, if your first language is not English, we require proof of English language test 
you may be exempt from providing English language test if you have an academic qualification equivalent to a UK bachelor's degree or a degree from a majority English speaking country. Um, I'm just going to move on to funding options. Um, the graduate diploma in the history of art students are not are not eligible for the master's loan as it is not considered to be a master's program or um, our course all the scholarships. Um, and the next one is accommodation. Um, we have a number of University of London accommodation available, most, mostly in Bloomsbury area, um, some catered um, and some studio flats. Um, our website will be updated in the new year to have most up to date information about um, the accommodation options we can offer. And um, we normally prioritize international students who have not lived or studied in the UK for the postgraduate accommodation. Um, as the slide says, um, if you have any questions, please do email pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk. That's pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk. Okay, that's all from me, Teresa. Okay, shall we just do... Um... Thank you, Saka, that's great. Um... I've just asked um, participants to put questions in the chat, and as yet, I can't see any. So oh, right. um, it may be that we've <laughs> we've given uh, such a good overview that um, we, we've um, we've answered the questions. Um, but if if those of you that are that are listening live um, have any questions that you you feel you'd like to um, have Taka and I address now, please, please. Oh, hang on, I can see one just coming in now. Um, I'll read out the question. Um, okay. Uh, this is Oliver. Um, I would be interested to hear about whether the graduate diploma or MA is a better avenue. If you take the diploma, would you need to also take the MA before taking on research level work? Uh, thanks for this question, um, Oliver. That it's a it's a really good question, um, and I think it 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 depends on your own, you know, as a, as a, if I can keep it sort of more broad, it depends on your background um, applying to the courthold. Um, I think. If, if you want to, um, if, if research is what you're interested in, then, then obviously um, an MA is, is the, the route you might be wanting to go down. If you've been out of education for a little while, I would really strongly endorse the diploma program because I think it basically um, prepares you for the rigors of MA uh, and beyond. Um, it is obviously um, uh, a course which um, so many of the students um, on the diploma apply to the court hold, but you would equally be eligible to apply for MAs wherever you like. But it would give you, um, if, if you've been out of education for a little while, the skills that you need and, and perhaps um, the uh, ability to sort of discern over the course of the year where you want where you want to apply, what sort of topic you might be more interested in, in focusing on for your um, postgraduate work. So it, it really depends on on your level and where you, uh, at what stage in your in your in your life you're applying. I think for the diploma program and as Taka says, uh, you are able to apply for both. So um, that that is an option open to you. But speaking from um, personal experience, having done the diploma um, as a as a uh, run as a pre up pre run to the to the MA, and I had I mean I I had a my first degree was in English literature. And I then had a career working as a, a lawyer in, in the city and um, came back into um, uh, art history after a gap of, of some time. And I think for me, the diploma was invaluable in, in paving the way for um, getting the most, again, um, out of what is an intense course. The MA is also a nine month um, course. So you want to sort of hit the ground running and the diploma is a great way of getting your skills up to scratch for that process. Uh, this is a question from Christian, um, who has um, a law degree and um, who's asking about proceeding to um, postgraduate studies, um, PhD study on completing the graduate diploma. I, I, you would need an MA um, certainly to apply at the court hold for the for the um, for a PhD program. I think that's right, Taka. Yeah, it is. Yes. 
um, he need a he need an MA in this sort of um, related subject. Um, it doesn't have to be. I mean, we had a student um, who had an MA in a sort of different subject before, um, but um, we sort of encourage students to have a MA in um, a sort of related topic to your project um, for your PhD. Um, and what's the other question? Uh, this is a question from Joanna, who's asking whether it's possible to apply for the MA with a degree in business and economics. Yes. Um, so um, we welcome like um, any, anyone who's actually done a degree in a sort of different um, academic backgrounds. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we've had um, somebody from a sort of law background, business background, um, so sort of classics um, or like science backgrounds. So we've got like all sorts of um, academic um, background. So please do feel welcome to apply. Yes, I mean, I think certainly from the, the cohort that I was in, I think there were um, seven of us that were um, lawyers <laughs> in a <our> previous <laughs> life. And in the current cohort, there's quite a few that have a, a business um, background. Yeah. Um, so th there's a two very popular fields um, that seem to attract <laughs> applicants yeah. to, the, to the diploma and, yeah, and to the MA. Too. Yes, oh, brilliant. Um... Um, I don't think we have any other questions okay. yet. Shall we just give a sort of couple more minutes um, yes. and then see yes. if anybody would actually ask any questions? Yeah. Um, oh, hang on. There's another one popped into the chat. Last request question. Uh, what's the first question? So my law degree is fair only. Is there any chance to give it a try? As in the fair, as in the um, grade, is it the grading system or? It sounds like it, I think, Taka, yes. Yeah. Um, so it, it really depends. Um, so um, so we, we do actually have a sort of entry requirements, but um, that's not set in stone. Um, obviously, just that some people excel on different areas of their application, such as um, like writing skills, um, and in terms of a sort of work experience or just like work in this sort of particular industry and they could actually bring um, the particular skills into the cohort. Um, so um, academic qualification is not everything. So um, even if your degree or your grade was slightly below than our um, entry requirements, I, I would actually say just please feel welcome to apply um, and obviously we would actually have a look at the other areas and then we sort of expect other areas to sort of excel um, other applicants um, to actually get through um, but um, do feel um, do feel actually welcome to actually apply thank you um, grade is low right um, but um, yeah um, just um, please do feel, I mean, we, we don't actually cut off any um, application just because of a grade. We will actually look at um, all submitted applications. Um, so I, th I think the other point perhaps to make on this is the fact that also um, the grade, um, the, the reason for having a sort of a, a threshold or a, su a suggested threshold is to sort of give an indication of the kind of level of uh, uh, academic rigor yeah. um, of the diploma course itself um, in yeah. terms of um, what's expected of you when you come here as a student so it's just, it's a guide for you in terms of what to expect um, yeah. for the sort of um, studying you're going to be doing here perhaps that's one a good way of looking at it that, that is actually brilliant yes thank you okay I think I think we might have um, had all questions probably um, from attendees um um, if you, um, if anybody's got any questions um, that we didn't actually answer or just our presentation didn't cover, um, um, please do contact us. Um, our email address is um, pgadmissions at courtauld.ac.uk and I will actually answer um, any questions as soon as possible. Yes, and the same goes for me. Um, my email, teresa.lane at courtauld.ac.uk. 
And um, if you have a specific question on the program, um, then, you know, again, feel free to email me and I'll do my best to respond um, and, and answer you. But um, I hope you found the um, presentation helpful and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.